basics of mold making. Mold cutting and waxing are probably two of the most underrated aspects of jewellery production. Chances are, if you have a perfect wax, you would probably get a good casting. Let's see how this is done. First, we take our finished master model and pack it in a soft uncured rubber. Once encased in rubber, the mold is placed in a frame and cooked in a vulcanizer for about one hour. Once it cools, the mold is now ready for cutting. The mold cutter carefully cuts the mold into at least two parts. They then remove the model, leaving a void in the rubber mold where the model once was. If the mold cutter did their job correctly, we should be able to get a mold that can produce a wax that is straight without any seam lines, has a clear surface, and has no air bubbles trapped in the wax. There are several types of mold materials that are available to you. One of them is a liquid silicon rubber, the other is a vulcanized mold. One of the main concerns for most people is the amount of shrinkage you will get from different rubber molds. Firstly, we have a silicon mold. A silicon mold will offer the least amount of shrinkage. Let's take a basic band that measures US finger size 7. Our model will now produce a piece that is now a US finger size 6 and 3 quarters or 1.1% less than the original. The formula of today's silicon is much more stable and should never be a problem. Keep in mind that these amounts of shrinkage should only be a general guide. Smaller pieces with less mass tend to shrink a little less, and larger pieces with more mass will give you a higher shrinkage. Secondly, we have the vulcanized mold. We consider a regular mold, one that is made using Castaldo white label rubber, the industry standard for over 50 years. If your original model was a US finger size 7, then your finished piece should measure size US 6 and 1 quarter, or 3.4% less than the original. This is a stronger mold with a longer life and is great for mass production.